and welcome. I'm Vince Malta, president of the National Association of Realtors, and this is Leadership Live, a special NAR event where you ask the questions and NAR experts share the latest information and insights working for you during this new world with COVID-19. Please add your questions to the comment section in this live stream on Facebook. We'll try to answer as many as we can during the session. We'll follow up with the rest in an FAQ after the event, which you'll find at nar.realtor slash leadership hyphen live. As we navigate through this unprecedented situation, NAR's message is twofold. First, please take care of yourself and your loved ones. And second, your well being and your business are of paramount importance for NAR. In fact, the entire leadership team would like you to know we're here for you, and I'd like you to meet them now. They are all practicing brokers from all parts of the country. First, we are so fortunate to have someone that genuinely understands our industry and who is a true visionary as our president-elect. From Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, Charlie Oppler. Thank you, Vince, and it's a pleasure to be here today. I wish I could see everybody because I miss the people, but uh, as Vince said, it's so important to be safe and make sure you're taking every precaution. I'd also like to take a moment to remember those realtors that have passed uh, during this COVID-19 and just keep in your thoughts all of the members who have lost family members uh, or those that are close to them. I think it's really uh, a difficult time that none of us have ever been through before. Moving forward, I think the most important thing you can do is be positive. Know that we are here to help, that the staff and the leadership team have your best interests at heart. And we really want to be there when we can all be together sometime in the near future. So stay well, be safe, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks, Charlie. Thank Next, you. it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first vice president who is busy planning for our future and assembling NAR's 2022 leadership from Plano, Texas, Leslie Ruta Smith. Leslie, I'll come back to you if I could. Our okay, I think NAR I was past muted. president. There you are, Leslie, great. Yeah, sorry about that. Hello, Realtor family. Thank you all so much for joining our Leadership Live today. We are here for you. Please reach out if there's anything we can do to help you. I hope you're noticing all the things that are going on behind the scenes. A big thank you to our CEO, Bob Goldberg, and his staff, and to our amazing and fearless leader, Vince Malta, our president. I hope you'll all take some time to thank all of them for the hard work they're doing on our behalf behind the scenes. Don't forget, committee application process has been extended to June the 1st, and please update your expertise profile at nar.realtor. Everyone stay safe and be well, and here's a big virtual hug to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Next, our immediate NAR past president in 2019, which many of us are already referring to as the good old days, from Edina, Minnesota, John Smaby. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be with you all today. Today, I just want to say a couple of quick things. A huge shout out to all of, to all of our volunteers and to the fan fantastic staff we have throughout the country on the local, state, and national level. Thank you very much. Keep leading, and we'll get through this together. Thank you, John. Our treasurer, who is in the second year of his term and doing an outstanding job for all of our members from Chatech, Wisconsin, Mr. John Floor. Well, thanks, Vince. Um, and hey, Realtor family, it's great to be with you all here today, even though it's virtual. Um, I've got one simple message for you guys today as your treasurer, and that is that NAR is financially strong. And the great thing is, is that we have ample reserves put away because we had such a great year last year. Now, what does that mean for you, our member? It means that we can offer the tools and the products 
that you folks need to get through these tough times. The bottom line is, is that we're here for you and we're gonna do whatever we can to make these times easier and more productive for you. So with all that said, please stay healthy, stay safe and keep washing those hands. Back to you, Vince. <laughs> Thanks, John. Next, a volunteer leader helping oversee our extraordinary work on Capitol Hill right now, our Vice President of Advocacy from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Christine Hansen. Thank you so much, Vince. Um, my <laughs> message to all of you is please know we will get through this. And your NAR advocacy team is working so hard on your behalf. You're going to hear about a lot of that in a few moments. So just please know we care about you. We care about your families. You're going to be okay. So please stay fact-based and not fear-based. Thanks so much. Back to you, Vince. Thanks, Christine. Proudly, someone overseeing the remarkable work that NAR is doing through all of this, your Vice President of Association Affairs from Chicago, Illinois, Ma Bell Guzman. Thank you, Vince. And thank you all for joining us today. I'm so happy to be part of this. And as we're experiencing this together, we're experiencing it in different ways. And right now, the word neighbor and community mean more now than ever. So whether your neighbor is 50 feet away or 5,000 miles away, especially with this realtor family, let's stay connected and reach out to each other any way that we can. And our communities will definitely need us after this is over so that we can rebuild and come back to being stronger than ever. Honestly, I believe we'll be a better people and a better nation. Thank you. Thank you, Ma Bell. Your leadership team also wanted to include future leader, first vice president candidate, Kenny Parcell, to help make certain what we're doing today also preserves our future success. Kenny. Thanks, Vince, and thanks for everyone to tune in. Remember, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Realtors are tough. So stay safe and stay tough. Thank you, Kenny. We're also joined by CEO Bob Goldberg, who's doing a phenomenal job. I'm grateful every day that he is our CEO. Joining him today are our group leaders and staff subject matter experts, all of whom are seemingly working 24 seven for us. So here's what we're covering today. We'll give updates and take your questions about how the $2 trillion federal stimulus affects independent contractors and small business owners. We'll share information on key business resources, right tools right now, and member benefits like telehealth, resources which NAR is making available to you free or at reduced cost. And we'll tell you about the virtual Realtors legislative meetings coming next month. Well, one thing we're sure of in this uncertain time is that Realtors, as always, believe in putting the customer first. So regardless of whether certain real estate services are deemed essential in your area, Realtors responsibility and mandate to take all necessary health and safety precautions, including those ordered by your state or locality, whichever are more strict. We must be united as an industry and as Americans to flatten the curve and beat this pandemic. Real estate is a vital part of the economy, and we're confident realtors will be essential to restoring it. Now, it gives me great pleasure. I'd like to turn over the program to Shannon McGann, Senior Vice President of Advocacy, to update us on the CARES Act. Shannon. Thank you, President Vince, and hello to everyone joining on Facebook, and I hope you and your families are safe and healthy. So for your Washington update, I know we often talk about a broken bipartisan Washington, but when this crisis hit, Congress acted in an overwhelmingly quick, bipartisan and problem-solving way and NAR jumped to action to ensure that our members were well represented in the response in an unprecedented way. So our goal was aligned with lawmakers. How do we protect the health and safety of our members while helping you to continue to pay the bills and stay in business during this crisis? So there are three main components from recent legislation that can help you get through it. Those are cash flow, tax benefits, and loans and grants. So first on the cash flow, you're all familiar with the direct cash payments that Treasury is currently processing. So that's $1,200 that will be sent to most adult Americans with an additional $500 for each child. 
that money will be directly deposited into your bank account using information from your 2018 or 2019 income tax filing. And then checks will be mailed if you don't use that direct deposit feature. There's also unemployment benefits, which we'll get to in a few minutes that are now available for independent contractors and the self-employed, including realtors. This is unprecedented and these benefits will be administered by the states. Uh, we also have extended paid sick and family leave that extends to self-employed, including realtors, and mortgage forbearance options that allow borrowers of government-backed mortgages to request up to a 360-day payment forbearance. On the tax side, I think you've all seen that tax day has been pushed to July 15th, and that's not just for the filing with an estimated payment, that's for payment as well. There's also a payroll tax delay that allows employers and self-employed individuals to defer employee social security tax payments between now and the end of 2020. There's additionally a penalty-free retirement account withdrawal. So you can withdraw up to $100,000 from a retirement account without having to pay that 10% early withdrawal penalty. And those funds are allowed to be contributed up to three years after to avoid the tax penalty. And finally, there's an employee retention tax credit. So businesses with fewer than 100 employees that do not take out the SBA loans can qualify for a refundable credit of up to $5,000 for each employee. And employers can be immediately reimbursed by reducing deposits of payroll taxes that have been withheld from employees' wages. On the loans and grants side, which is getting most of the public attention, there's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, which says loan in the name, but it's more of a grant. So that is a fully forgiven advance of up to $10,000 available within three days. Sole proprietors, independent contractors, um, and employees, employers with 500 employees or fewer are eligible. And that can be, you can apply for that on SBA's website. And finally, the big one, the Paycheck Protection Program, the forgivable loan designed to cover costs so small businesses can keep their workers on the payroll. Uh, we'll get into that in a few minutes, but this is another one that is designed, and I'm sure many of you have already been waiting in line at your local lending institution to get there, so we'll walk through all the steps of that process. So speaking of steps, our next steps is that Congress isn't expected back in Washington until April 20th at the earliest but congressional leadership and the president have already been working on another iteration of that rescue package and everyone wants to know what will be in it. So the good news is everyone in Washington is in agreement that more funding is needed for the Paycheck Protection Program. It is already at $350 billion and it's showing the popularity that it should be extended. The bad news is we have some competing demands coming from the House and Senate as to how much and where the funding goes, but it looks like the CARES 2 package with more funding for the Paycheck Protection Program is moving and the Senate is hopeful and eager to process this through a unanimous consent or a voice vote early this as early as this week. And in fact, just a couple hours ago, we got the text of the Senate bill and it's under two pages simply extending more funding for the Paycheck Protection Program. And we've learned on Capitol Hill that the shorter the bill, the more they mean business. And what makes realtors so effective on the Hill with these asks is that we're not representing a special interest. We're representing everyone's interest. And that means our realtor members, property owners, consumers in the transaction, and the industry and business as a whole. So as we're looking at next steps past the continuation of CARES or CARES 2.0, there are a number of other issues that we are going to be advocating for. Uh, one is the remote online notary. So currently 23 states have access to remote online notary, but we're working on a federal minimum standard and we already have bipartisan legislation introduced in the House and in the Senate. And we're looking for a vehicle where we can attach this. Uh, unfortunately, CARES Act, it was not within the scope of these economic stimulus programs, but there is going to be more action. And we're also working on the state level to get more access to it. Uh, we're also pressing Treasury on further tax extensions, including for 1031 like-kind exchange and for opportunity zones. And finally, we're working with industry partners and regulators on ensuring that much needed forbearance measures don't unintentionally lock up the mortgage marketplace. And we have a team of policy experts who've been working around the clock, as President Vince said, on the implementation of these important brand new programs. So now I'll turn it over to senior policy representative Aaron Stackley to discuss the small business programs. Thank you, Shannon. And hello, realtors. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy during these bizarre times. Uh, I'm going to be talking, as Shannon said, about the two new SBA programs that were created by the CARES Act. 
The first is the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. And the second is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Grant, or EIDL. Both of these are intended to help businesses impacted by COVID-19 and eligible businesses are those with 500 or fewer employees, sole proprietors, independent contractors, and the self-employed. NAR has an FAQ available covering both of these programs on our coronavirus page under the advocacy tab, which is being updated regularly and contains relevant links to applications and SBA and treasury guidance. So let's talk about the Paycheck Protection Program. These loans are administered directly by SBA lenders. So fill out your applications and go through your SBA lender for these. The loan amounts are 250% of the average monthly payroll expenses for a business for the previous year, or the average monthly income for uh, independent contractors. And that's capped at $10 million. The loans should be used over an eight week period and must be used for one of the eligible uses in the program. We learned late last week from the SBA that when calculating average monthly payroll costs, businesses should not include pay to independent contractors, as independent contractors are able to apply for these loans for themselves. The uh, application process opened last Friday, April 3rd, for small businesses and sole proprietors, and opens this Friday, April 10th, for independent contractors and the self-employed. If, these programs require, if the program's requirements are met, then these PPP loans are 100% forgivable. They essentially become a grant from the SBA. Those requirements are that the business uses at least 75% of the loan amount toward maintaining payroll costs, that the number of employees stays the same as pre-COVID, and that the total loan amount go toward eligible uses which are payroll expenses, mortgage interest, rent, and utilities. Again, if all those requirements are met, these loans are 100% forgivable. However, if an employee can't spend 75% of the loan toward payroll costs, or if, has, if they have to let some of their employees go, the forgivable amount phases out. I'm gonna talk now about the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, or EIDL Advance Grants. Economic injury disaster loans were an existing program within the SBA already. Unlike the PPP loans, these are administered directly through the SBA. So you apply for them through an application on the SBA website. These loans are available for up to $2 million and are meant to cover working capital needs. The CARES Act created a $10,000 advance grant within the EIDL program which deploys to borrowers more quickly than the full EIDL they apply for. The $10,000 advance is forgivable if used for one of the eligible uses, payroll expenses, mortgage or rent payment, utilities, and other debt obligations that can't be met due to the crisis. The SBA has an updated streamlined EIDL application available on its website now, which includes the request for the advance grant. Businesses can apply for both a PPP and an EIDL loan, but if they receive them both, they should be careful with their um, accounting and their record keeping because they each must be used for separate purposes. If you get forgiveness under the PPP loan program and you've also received the $10,000 EIDL grant, the EIDL grant amount is subtracted from the PPP forgiveness amount. Again, NAR has an FAQ on both of these programs available on our coronavirus page which includes links to the different applications, where to find an SBA lender, as well as resources from the Treasury and the SBA. It's updated regularly as we get new information. We encourage realtors to look at that regularly. And for those of you who work with small businesses as clients, consider sharing it with them to be a resource for them as they navigate these difficult times. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erin. And now we'll turn it over to Nia Duggins to talk about the unemployment assistance programs. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for uh, tuning in to this very first Facebook Live, which is really cool that we're able to connect with you in this way. I know that we are living in truly unprecedented times, but um, as the leadership team has mentioned, that these times won't last forever and we will get through together. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, which was created under the CARES Act to provide unemployment compensation to 
independent contractors, self-employed individuals, and yes, realtors. So this program uh, was intentionally designed with um, also the advocacy efforts of NAR's leadership team to include independent contractors as well as uh, self-employed individuals to ensure that they also receive support during this time. It provides up to 39 weeks of unemployment compensation for eligible individuals. In order for uh, individuals to receive these benefits, states must enter into agreements with the U.S. Department of Labor for the administration of these programs. The, pro the program uh, primarily is fully federally funded. However, states must administer it um, in a way similar to how they would unemployment benefits within the state. So in order to find out whether you're eligible and whether your state is participating in this program, it's best to, to check with the state labor uh, department or workforce development agency that's responsible for administering unemployment benefits within your state. Um, also, we know at this time that full and partial benefits may be available for, el for eligible individuals. That means, for example, if you are able to partially telework, but you're not able to complete transactions or close transactions because of restrictions as a result of COVID-19, then you would be eligible to apply for this program within your state, so long as the state is participating. So it's important uh, to learn more about this expanded benefit. We have put FAQs up on our website at ner.realtor uh, for you to visit the, the site in order to find out um, what additional information you may need around this program. And again, I would also like heavily recommend that you check with your state offices, state labor agencies, as well as the unemployment offices to truly find out what resources are available and what states have entered into those agreements. We are learning that some states have entered agreements already with Department of Labor, while others have not just yet. And many of the states are working to try to implement this program. The states are incentivized to participate. And so, you know, you may have been told a couple of weeks ago that as an independent contractor, you were ineligible for this program under the CARES Act. If your state has signed an agreement to offer these benefits, then you would be eligible to apply. So please go back to them, definitely check, continue to check NAR.realtor for our up-to-date FAQs. And you know we're here to serve you and to try to make this process as seamless as possible. So thank you, Shannon. Thanks so much, Nia. And we've got time uh, for one quick question in the queue. And uh, this will go to Megan Booth, our policy director. Uh, this question is, I know HUD, our cities and states have put a pause on evictions. And of course, no one wants to put tenants out on the streets ever, let alone during this national health crisis. What can you tell landlords who are squeezed between missed rent payments and overdue mortgage payments? Yeah, thanks, Shannon. There is a real disconnect with this issue. So you're seeing that um, if you have a federally assisted loan, renters are eligible for up to 120 days protection from eviction. But the property owners, housing providers, are only provided 90 days forbearance if they have a federal loan. Now that's about 45 to 50% of the multifamily portfolio that has a federal loan, either FHA or Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. For the other 45 to, or 55 to 50%, what are they supposed to do? Well, number one, you can try calling your service or your loan provider. We strongly encourage this. A lot of private lenders are offering some sort of uh, payment plan, forbearance, some sort of workout. So that's the first step you should take. I know that because your renters may not be paying their rent, you're going to be struggling. So what are other things you could do? You can apply for some of the SBA loans that Erin talked about. Many uh, housing providers are eligible for those loans. So you should check and see if you're able to get one of those. Another thing that you can do is there is a tax benefit that you can get to carry back net operating losses against profitable years. You can go back, the CARES Act provided this new provision. You can go back to your tax returns from 2018 for this year, for 2019, even going forward into 2020 and use that carry back provision. So there's more information on the FAQ that several of our um, panelists have spoken about. I encourage you to go there to look about that and know that we are very well aware of this issue. We've reached out to Congress and the administration to make the point that protecting renters is very important at this time. But if housing providers can't make their mortgage payments, 
the housing will be lost anyway. So we need to protect both ends of the spectrum. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. And one last time, that's nar.realtor forward slash coronavirus FAQ has all the latest frequently asked questions that are clocking in around 13 pages. Thank you for your time today and I'll kick it back to President Vince. Thank you, Shannon, and thank your team for doing an outstanding job for us on the Hill. Now I'd like to turn it over to NAR CEO Bob Goldberg about the many NAR programs we're making available. Yeah, thank you, uh, Vince, and thanks uh, everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, you know, I wanted to give also a shout out uh, to all of our NAR staff. You know, during this time, uh, every one of our employees are still fully deployed, even our call centers, uh, where we have uh, folks in Nebraska and in Chicago. Uh, we're handling it with great telephony systems so that we can be responsive and putting our members first. Uh, while I have everybody here, I'll call out one uh, number. Uh, we have a hotline that we set up. Uh, for all of our members that if there's questions on anything with COVID-19, the CARES Act, anything that we're doing in terms of member benefits, uh, that number is 1-800-874-6500, 1-800-874-6500. Uh, you know, in a crisis like this, <clears throat> um, where your association really needs to stand apart uh, from any other time is where we all care, certainly our leadership and certainly all of our staff about the health and welfare of our members. Uh, that is imperative and it shines through more during crisis that we're going through uh, right now. Um, so one of the things that uh, we came forward with was how do we really leverage all the resources, both the human resources, the product resources, the education resources, the service resources that NER does on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why we're here to exist. Um, and we looked at it and said, how do we tee up many of those products and services and education to help our members in this crisis and provide a program that we now call Right Tools Right Now. Uh, hopefully you've seen lots of promotion about it. But the emphasis of Right Tools right now is in essence like clear the warehouse of all the great resources that we have. Provide many of these services at no cost to our members where typically they have had a price tag or other products and services even at significant discounts uh, at or below NAR's cost. Uh, but a majority of those are uh, for free. <clears throat> we have over 250 different products, services and education that we've teed up under Right Tools right now. And uh, as I'm looking here on the box, I see I got a question as to give us an example of some of the education programs that are being made available for free or at a discount. Uh, so I'm gonna ta uh, toss it over uh, to Jennifer Rzuski, who is our vice president in our education area. Jen, you're probably in a better position to answer that than me, because you live with this every single day with our education and professional development. So if you could answer that question, that would be great. Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. We hope you're doing well and your families are doing well from wherever you're listening into. Um, I'm really excited to share with you educational opportunities that you can take advantage of. We have three courses at no cost, online courses that we are offering through the right tools right now. The first is the Pricing Strategies Advisor the ePro certification, and also the real estate investing course. Two of those, the Pricing Strategies Advisor and the ePro lead to a certification. And not only are those courses, be, courses being offered at no cost, the application fees have also been reduced to 50% off. So great opportunity there. In addition, the entire online catalog of courses are being offered at 30% off. So we hope that you go and take advantage of those courses, build up your skills at this time. Um, also, we have webinars that are being offered for Commitment to Excellence and also through our financial wellness program. You can find all the information at nar.realtor slash right tools right now. And we want to be here to help you and serve you. And we hope that you really take advantage of all of those courses at no cost. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks, Jen. And uh, while we're looking at giving some examples, uh, Colleen Doyle, 
who uh, oversees all of NER's products and services. Maybe, uh, Colleen, you can just spend a minute and do the same thing as to highlighting for all of our members who are listening some of the product benefits that we're uh, providing as well. Absolutely. We're providing um, products from across the entire organization, from different products in our research group, like our 2019 profile of home buyers and sellers, to other webinars that highlight how to really take advantage of the resources we have to offer at this time, like making the most of the um, RPR during the COVID crisis and um, the 2020 Technology Trends webinar from the Realtor Store, in addition to many other webinars. We also have um, different digital tools that we're offering that um, from Realtor Content Resource, as well as the Realtor Store, such as our social media for Realtors digital marketing tools. And all of these tools are meant for you to take advantage of what's going on right now, market yourself online and make sure that you're still connecting with clients and you're getting yourself out there and marketing. And like Jen said, go to the right tools page because it's from across the organization and everything from C2E, X and Center for Realtor Development to all of the different things like research. Yeah, uh, thanks, Colleen. You know, and as a reminder, uh, we have, like I said, nearly 250 different products and services. Uh, and we really want to make as many of those available. We've already had tens of thousands of members in a week and a half already take advantage of right tools right now. Many of those free products, uh, those discounted products and services and education. Uh, over almost two and a half million dollars of these products and services have already been given away to our membership. Um, and that number we have put no cap on. So we're going to continually add products to the mix. Keep an eye on Right Tools right now. It's nar.realtor slash Right Tools right now. Um, and let me also add one of the newest ones we just added to the Right Tools right now toolkit. Uh, you saw an announcement, many of you saw a video that I put out, but I really want to give special thanks to our leadership team um, and our finance committee, uh, where we made a decision to provide a telemedicine offer for our members. Uh, let me tell you how important telemedicine is. If you've been watching uh, the depressing news every day with the daily briefings of this, uh, of this crisis, uh, you'll see that Dr. Fauci, you'll see the CDC, you'll see the uh, Surgeon General of the United States have all said, if you have an opportunity to use a telemedicine program, take advantage of that. Uh, why? Because none of us wanna clog up our doctor's offices, hospitals, emergency rooms, uh, et cetera. So one of our partners who we've been working with for years in our Realtors Insurance Marketplace that you can find as part of our Realtor Benefits, uh, has been offering telemedicine as a benefit to our members already um, at a reduced price. We actually went a step further. Our leadership and our finance committee said, you know what, let's dip into some of our reserves that John Floor, our treasurer, talked to you about at the uh, beginning of this and said, why don't we fund this uh, on behalf of our members that don't have access to telemedicine? And it can be used not only for uh, uh, common types of uh, issues, you know, uh, sprained ankle, colds, whatever, even a pre-diagnosis, uh, if they feel like you're coming down with something worse, they'll refer you to your own physician or to an emergency room, but it can be used for anything. What I love about what we've done here by funding this, and it's a multi-seven figure program to fund this on behalf of our members, is that it's not just for our members, it's for our members and your respective families. So it's a family program that we're gonna cover uh, for two months. Um, and I'm gonna ask uh, Kristen Morelia, who is our director of our partnership program to talk a little bit more about what members need to do to sign up because there's a limited enrollment time. And uh, Kristen, if you could just quickly give an overview of uh, telemedicine and how, and how our members can sign up because thousands are already taking advantage of the free benefit that NER is giving here. That's right. Thanks, Bob. Um, you've set it up perfectly. Um, this was a really unique opportunity for us to leverage an existing partnership in, in a unique way in a really relevant time where we're all being asked to limit our exposure to um, each other and to the public. It's just essential. So yes, Bob is right that we have two months that have been approved for all of our members and all of their family to leverage a telemedicine service for no cost at all 
We're limiting it to those pleas who do not currently have access. There are some, many of you actually, through our research that we believe probably do have access through an existing major medical plan that could be Medicare also. So we ask that you check there first and please use that if, if you do have it. Um, let's see here. We really believe that all of the members are gonna benefit from telemedicine now, but also into the future. It's really a game changer here. So we worked hard for a second aspect of this to provide benefit ongoing. And we negotiated a very low rate to make it affordable for members to have this ongoing, their families, and they can have access at just $7 a month, which is extremely low if you were to look out there at other providers. Um, other features here, 24-7, 365 access to uh, US board certified physicians. These are folks who are specially trained to deliver care this way for non-emergency situations. They can write prescriptions where medically necessary, um, all benefits. Um, through our program, there are no co-pays. There is no limit to the number of visits that you can obtain. Let's see, I'm sure uh, you can see the value of this. We've all been kind of thinking about this hard. It's not just about the dollars, but this is about safety. It's about time savings here. We have thousands of our members already signed on in just the few days in which we announced it. We hope that members who are in need of the solution will take advantage and spread the word. Those who want to learn a little more, go to nar.realtor slash telehealth. And we ask that you do that before April 15th. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Um, and, and let me um, say again that one of the unique things about this program, and I really want to credit our team to this uh, for making this happen, is that it's also available to our members in the territories. Many of these insurance type programs are not available uh, to folks that may be, for example, in Puerto Rico or Guam or Virgin Islands. Uh, this extends to any NAR member. So that's the beauty of this program. And I'd be remiss at the end of this by not thanking also our NAR affiliates who have also teed up many products and services and education in the right tools right now program as well. So uh, we're certainly working as a team uh, we would love for all of you to take advantage of it. I see we're over 15,000 people live right now participating in this uh, and take advantage of these programs. Just know that your association and your leadership care so much uh, about doing whatever we can to assist you and your families uh, in this trying time and uh, know that all of our employees are there to serve and we're ready to do what it takes to make our members uh, be positioned with any types of things they need help with. So uh, President Vince, I think we've covered this end of it and um, we'll uh, go from there. All right, thank you, Bob, much appreciated. And for those uh, viewing this on Facebook, know that this session is being recorded and you'll have access to it. So don't worry about furiously taking notes. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to our Chief Marketing and Communications Officer, Victoria Gillespie, We'll share updates about the virtual realtor legislative meetings coming up. Victoria. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Vince. Thank you all for joining us today. I am so pleased to share some of the exciting programming that NAR has planned for you for our first ever virtual realtors legislative meeting event. Our goal is twofold. One is to provide an engaging committee experience for members that facilitate moving very vital NAR business forward with recommendations, just as if we were in our face-to-face -face meetings. Our staff executives are currently working with committee chairs to finalize that committee schedule now. Second, our goal is to offer a compelling slate of conference sessions to an even wider audience than ever before because of our virtual capabilities. The content that only NAR can provide you. From NAR 360 to our very own Dr. Lawrence Yoon Economics Trends. There will also be guest speakers from various facets of our government. Committees and other business meetings will take place during the following three weeks, April 27th, May 4th, May 11th, via Zoom, and we will have solid security measures for those Zoom sessions. Committee meetings will be open to committee members only with a few select meetings 
actually being broadcast. All the times that I mentioned to you going forward will be Eastern time. And again, we'll publish our meetings and events schedule within the next week, so stay tuned. Regional caucuses will be held on Thursday, May the 14th from 4.30 to 6 Eastern. Our board of directors will take place Friday, May 15th from 11 to 1. All will be live streamed. We will also host our first ever virtual election as we actually have two treasurer candidates. Please know that we are working very closely with the credentials committee. The realtor legislative meeting conference sessions will be carried out over three days, May the 12th, May the 13th, and May 14th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Those will be broadcast so that all of our members may participate. The focus of this year's event will be on what NAR is doing to help your business right now. Tuesday, May 12th from 11 to 2, the following will be hosted. NAR 360, our federal legislative and political forum featuring Rahm Emanuel, former mayor of Chicago and White House chief of staff during the Obama administration, along with Chris Christie, former New Jersey governor. We'll also host the regulatory issues forum that day. Wednesday, May 13th, again, 11 to 2. The lineup will include the general session, our residential economic issues and trends, and real property valuation form. And finally, Thursday, the 14th, there will be three education sessions offered, 11 to 2. One, keeping calm and focused in today's environment. Two, pivoting to successfully executing business in a virtual manner, and third, financial wellness, strategies during these turbulent times. Please look for additional speaker announcement and a full schedule of events over the next week. All of this will be published for your convenience at legislativemeetings.realtor, legislativemeetings.realtor. Now, if I may, I would like to field a few questions that have come through. One, I'd like Heidi Henning, our VP of Conventions and Meetings, if she would, please join in for a moment to help me vet a few questions. Heidi, one question that I received that I'd like your help with is, do I need to register for the virtual events taking place at legislative meetings? Thank you, Victoria. For the virtual conference sessions, registration will be available when the event platform launches within a few weeks, and there will be no cost to register, or you will be able to watch the live stream sessions directly, similar to what you are doing now. Thanks, Heidi. A, a second one that I see that came in, you know how excited everybody is with our Capitol Hill visits and how vital that is. Um, are we planning to take something to take the place of our Hill visits this year. What are your thoughts? Well, NAR's federal political coordinators will continue to work to advance NAR legislative priorities with their members of Congress within their states. Thanks so much, Heidi. Now I'll toss it back to you, Vince, if I may. Thank you, Victoria. And we've got some time to uh, get to some uh, more of your questions. And so Aaron, I'm gonna tee a couple of these up to you right off. Um, we're hearing that realtors are having trouble finding an SBA approved lender that will serve them. Uh, why is that? Thanks, Vince. Uh, this is definitely a question that uh, we've been hearing a lot from our members this week. Uh, I'll start by saying this is a massive loan program that was essentially created from scratch in the span of one week between passage into law and opening for borrowers to apply for. Needless to say, it's been a little bumpy. Many banks have been prioritizing applications from existing business customers, in part because they already have information in their systems for those borrowers, um, and in part because under existing law, they have to verify certain, a range of business information before they can consider a loan. With the sheer amount of applications that some of these banks have been getting, this is the only way really that they could get through them. 
Um, what I am telling people when they're applying for these Paycheck Protection Program loans is um, think of it as Aaron's PPP for PPP, and that is you need to be prepared, you need to be persistent, but you may need to be patient. Preparation means have any and all documentation that might be required for these loans ready at the go. There are some required documents. So for example, for independent contractors, there are 1099 MISD, or um, for uh, small businesses, there are payroll taxes, things like that. Um, but just really any financial statements that might do uh, some help in illustrating how much you are getting paid or how much you are paying your employees. Um, you need to be persistent. Um, if you go to one SBA lender and they say, no, I'm sorry, we're not taking new applications at this time, go to another. There are tools on the SBA site to help you find SBA lenders, which are also linked to from our FAQ. Um, and so I just encourage you to keep trying and then be patient. We know that there is a need for these funds um, and just with the sheer rush of people to get to them, there is going to be some amount of log jamming here. Um, we are hopeful that there will be more funding put into the program so it stretches further and can accommodate more borrowers. Um, but for now, preparation, persistence, and patience. Thank you, Aaron. Another question that we get a lot, nuts and bolts question, how do we as independent contractors with no employees calculate payroll expenses for and what should we indicate in the applications asking for company legal name? Thank you. Um, so I'll start with the payroll expenses. Um, again, as I sort of touched on before, this is something where there's still some amount of uncertainty. Um, lenders are going to want to see any and all documents that are related to wage, commission, income, or net earnings for self-employment that you've earned. So you'll need to collect any earnings reports, pay stubs, or invoices that you have. Um, sole proprietorships should be prepared to submit schedules from their 2019 tax returns that are filed or are yet to be filed, showing income and expenses. Independent contractors will need to submit schedules from their tax returns, as well as Form 1099 MISC from 2019. And all self-employed individuals should be prepared to submit 2019 payroll tax filings as reported to the IRS. Again, if you have other supporting documents, have those at the ready. Um, your lender will be able to hopefully provide you with more guidance and any specific documents above and beyond those that might be necessary. Um, how to indicate your company name. This is sort of a, a bug in the system, I would say right now. This is what happens when you take a program or you take existing uh, applications for programs that didn't have independent contractors eligible for them and make them eligible all of a sudden. Um, right now, I'm advising people to speak to their lenders about what they should put in there. Um, potentially just your own name could do, uh, but it's going to we're waiting on additional guidance from the SBA on that point, and hopefully we'll have it very soon as these loans open for independent contractors beginning this Friday. But again, talk to your lenders. They are really um, going to be able to hopefully walk you through that process, especially because they may have their own internal requirements. Thank you, Aaron. Shannon. We have a lot of investors in 1031 exchanges. When do you think the extension deadlines on 1031 exchanges might be voted on? Great, thank you. So NAR sent a letter to Treasury on March 17th, urging the deadline relief for 1031 like-kind exchanges. The good news is it does not take an act of Congress to make this change. This is something that Treasury could do. But that's never stopped us from leaning on our members of Congress before. So we are still having those uh, those candid conversations with key senators, key House members as to the importance of this extension. Um, the White House is, is engaged, Treasury is engaged. We have been hearing good things about the um, uh, the encouraging things about their willingness to move this deadline, and we are expecting to get some more guidance on that relief in the next week or so. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Jennifer, I'm going to throw this question out to you. Is CE credit available for these educational courses offered through Right Tools right now? Great question. And the answer is yes. Many of our online courses do offer continuing education, which is wonderful. If you go to onlinelearning.realtor, um, take a look at the course that you're interested in, and there's a great resource. It's a great visual map that you can click on your state, and it will tell you if the CE is available. But again, many, many of the courses do offer CE, which is a great bonus. Thank you. Bob, can you highlight some of the support uh, you're offering for commercial members right now? Yeah, uh, we have uh, an entire team uh, that is dedicated to our commercial practitioners uh, on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. Uh, so we are the ones uh, working uh, not only with that specialty area, but also with our commercial affiliates um, and uh, working hand-in-hand, -hand, again, to provide education courses uh, and benefits. But uh, even many of the items that were covered um, uh, in our advocacy uh, update with the CARES Act and also with what we're working with the folks on uh, Stimulus 4 uh, that's coming out. We want to make sure that our commercial practitioners and their respective businesses are also covered. Um, you know, and I think it's worth mentioning here, Vince, you know, when you heard from all of our folks giving the update on the CARES Act, uh, unlike many different organizations where you hear they just send letters in to different places in the government to get their voices heard. Uh, the team that we have in DC uh, with, with that, that work with uh, the Washington counterparts uh, in government, uh, it's more than just letters. Uh, we have special relationships where we have staff that work with folks on the Hill, with the speaker, uh, with the majority leader in the Senate, uh, the minority players on both sides. We work with regulators. Uh, we have contacts directly at Treasury, uh, the Department of Labor. Um, we're very well connected. So it's not just a letter that's happening. It's our direct contact and voices with our staff talking to those respective players that are helping to make decisions. We talked about earlier the uh, 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 pandem pandemic unemployment assistance program uh, with all of our independent contractors. That voice was loud and clear being driven by our staff that are up on the Hill talking to folks in labor and talking to the leaders in Congress to say, you've got the world's largest trade association that represents the real estate vertical that's over 20% of gross domestic product. We've got to make sure that those practitioners are taken care of. That's why those voices happen and why those uh, different components of the CARES Act are happening. So just know that commercial uh, is also included. Thank you, Bob. Aaron, I got to come back to you again because we have a lot of questions regarding this, the independent contractor uh, relief programs. Can we apply for all three of the different programs out there? The PPP, the other one offered by SBA, and uh, unemployment. Thanks, Vince. Um, so I'm going to answer this question in two parts. The first part, I'm going to talk about the two SBA programs, the PPP loan and the economic injury disaster loan. The short answer is yes, you can apply for both of these, and they are both open to independent contractors. Again, just to refresh, the PPP loans are based on payroll or income, and the economic injury disaster loans are based on working capital needs. If you apply and get qualified for both loans, the proceeds for them need to be used for different purposes. So be sure to keep a careful accounting of how you use those funds. In addition, if you get the advance grant through the EIDL, which is the $10,000 and is forgivable, you, need to, uh, you should know that that $10,000 will be subtracted from any forgivable amount under the PPP program. Basically, they don't want people double dipping on uh, forgivable loans from the SBA. When it comes to the unemployment insurance, that is something that we're still trying to figure out and we're seeking extra guidance and working with some expert um, consultants on that question. Um, because the unemployment is being administered through the state versus the SBA is a federal administration, there's some question there. Um, and also because under the PPP program, you would be collecting your salary, technically. Um, it's 
it's a little confusing as to whether or not you would qualify for unemployment while getting a loan that covers your salary costs. So that's something we are delving into. We've, um, we're seeking more guidance. And again, we're working with some expert consultants to try to answer that question for our members. Thank you again, Aaron. Uh, one question I might handle is, what is the primary thing we as local leadership should be doing for our members under shelter in place orders? And what is the best messaging long-term? So we get this one a lot. And basically, while we provided guidance under the, um, on the federal level, um, following CDC orders, um, your state and local communities may have more stricter protocols in place and that may mean no personal properties. Use virtual tools at every step of the transaction. What we're amazed at, what we're seeing is our members are so adaptable and they're utilizing these virtual tools. In fact, clients and customers have been wanting these for a very long time. So if there's any silver lining to all this, we're gonna be more compliant there. So, um, we want to get to the other side. We don't want to contribute to the crisis at hand. So let us utilize those virtual tools and go online and see some of the suggestions uh, that we have for you to employ that in the transaction. Um, Lawrence, got a quick one here for you. Lawrence, what is the market lookout for the next few months? Well, it's going to be volatile. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, all the economic data, whether it is the unemployment insurance claims or the next reading on GDP will be completely off the chart. Uh, for example, GDP reading could be minus 20%. Never in the history of America has we experienced such a decline in such a short span of time. Of course, we are in a, this very unique circumstance. So the decline would be quite short. But the rebound will also be quite strong. Why? Because if we believe after this crisis is over, hair salons will open, daycare centers will open, the most of the job losses that occur uh, will soon be reopening. So the rebound will be also strong. Now, because we lost the second quarter of the year spring buying season, we may not fully catch up because some families want to uh, close the deal by end of summer before the school year begins. And some families who may not be able to do that may say, I'm going to just wait out another year before uh, deciding to make that move. So overall condition is that uh, we will see some volatility, some decline, measurable decline in the upcoming months in terms of closing. Uh, then the sales will begin to rise as the economy begins to pick up. Uh, one more certain item is that home prices should remain relatively stable, completely unlike the stock market volatility. Housing wealth is the vast source of middle-class wealth and it should remain stable because we had a housing shortage before the crisis. Now we have delisting far fewer inventory in the marketplace right now uh, as people are waiting it out. Uh, so home prices should remain relatively stable. Thank you, Lawrence. Well, our time is coming to a close. Thank you for joining us today. Again, this entire event will be archived here on the NAR Facebook channel in the video tab, or you can access it at nar.realtor.com. So while much remains uncertain right now, one thing is for sure, our communities and our nation will recover and realtors will play a huge role in our nation's recovery. In the meantime, know that the realtor team has your back. So please stay safe, look after your loved ones. We wish you all good health and we thank you for your support. Till we meet again, thank you. <laughs>